Blakeman, we have been paying a lot of attention to the Canadian housing market. Of course, during COVID-19, we've seen a lot of banks flexible with mortgage holders, in some cases allowing for those mortgage holders to defer some of their payments. Uh, and then some interesting developments last week when we saw Ottawa tighten the rules for first-time home buyers. That a move by the CMHC. Bob Kelly is the former chairman of the CMHC, a longtime banking executive, including the former CEO of Bank of New York Mellon, has joined us throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. Bob, always nice to have you with us. Thanks for being with us. And uh, I just want to start with this development with CMHC and your reaction to it. Sure. Well, um, I haven't spoken to the folks there directly, but um, I'm not entirely surprised. you got to remember here, Canada has over 13% unemployment now and a huge amount of uncertainty because we're really only two or three months into this uh, COVID epidemic uh, uh, issue. So uh, I took a quick look at uh, what most economists are saying. looks like uh, they're, the bid offer spreads pretty wide on how much housing prices are going to go down, but it's quite possible that in coming months, housing prices could go down, if you listen to them, at 5 to 10 percent. And um, CMHC has a mandate for uh, ensuring financial stability. So I think at somewhere in this, they're thinking about, boy, you know, we only have to put down a 5 percent down payment, $19 of debt for every dollar of equity. Uh, let's protect first-time buyers and let's protect the taxpayer in this time of uncertainty. No, it's interesting. We had a development this morning. We mentioned in our newscast that Genworth MI, which uh, obviously is a, a major private sector mortgage insurer, uh, they felt the need to put out a press release where, Bob, basically they're saying uh, that they are not going to match the CMHC's move to tighten requirements. Um, I'd love to get your reaction to that as well. Well, um, I think that's OK. Um, if the private sector wants to get some market share, then maybe that's a way they can do it. They don't have a mandate for uh, financial stability in the country. And, uh, and I'm sure they want to keep uh, their mortgage brokers and uh, insurance air, um, and housing brokers uh, happy. And that's a good thing in this economy. Let's balance that against the moves that the banks have taken so far, Bob, to obviously defer mortgage payments. Um, I, I do wonder, um, while there's been a lot of talk around an improving economy, you got a stock market that's moving up, um, w could we be in a situation where um, down the road people just aren't back into a position where they feel ready to make their, their mortgage payments again and, and how the banks are going to be navigating through that here uh, in the months ahead? It's a really good question, John. It's, it gets back to the uncertainty issue. Um, there's no economist in Canada that knows exactly what's going to happen here. Uh, there may be a need for more stimulus on that front. I don't know. Certainly Canada has the ability to do that if they feel it's absolutely necessary. You don't want to take on more debt as a country, but on the other hand, Canada has the capacity. And uh, the biggest question from my standpoint always comes down to unemployment. Um, how quickly will unemployment come down or will it stay high? And part of that is going to be about COVID-19. Uh, are we going to see a resurgence in the fall or not? Because if that happens, we're going to have a much slower recovery, obviously. Against that backdrop, I mean, you saw what all the big Canadian banks just did in terms of, you know, setting aside money for bad loans in their quarterly results. Um, d d what, what was your assessment of, I mean, huge numbers, right? But I guess if it's not right. a worst case scenario, maybe, you know, we don't see that kind of uh, impact. I mean, what was your assessment of what they ultimately did? Well, the first and most important thing to look at is what's happened to the stock prices. And, uh, Obviously, they got hit tremendously uh, in, in March, uh, but they've been slowly climbing back. And uh, I took a quick look just before your call at uh, Royal Bank and TD, and they're basically at 90 percent of where they were a year ago. So the stocks have performed well. They didn't have to cut their dividends. I think they have lots of room to lend. Um, I think the market was expecting big numbers in the last quarter and perhaps this quarter as well in terms of uh, putting on lots of provisions. If things go well in the fall, and uh, that is a big if, it's possible that uh, they could start drawing down uh, some of those reserves. Uh, it might be a mm. bit early. Maybe it's the fourth quarter. Maybe it's the first quarter next year. 
but I'm still pretty optimistic that the banks should continue to do quite well here, and they are one of the strengths of the uh, Canadian economy. How, how would you compare the shape of the Canadian economy versus the U.S. economy at this point? It's, um, it's similar. Uh, obviously, Canadians, um, the Canadian economy has a uh, has more reliance upon the resource sector, uh, which is risk. Uh, it's not as diverse an economy in that the tech sector isn't as big. Uh, but if you look at the uh, what's happened in bond markets, what's happened to the equity markets, they've been pretty similar. Uh, I think the uh, the unemployment rates are amazingly close. There are differences in the way it's calculated. But I think Canada is actually looking a little better on apples to apples basis than the United States. The, the COVID-19 cases are important too. Canada on a, uh, on a per capita basis has uh, less than half what the United States has in terms of total number of cases, in terms of cases per million. That may be very encouraging for the fall. And it all comes down to whether or not these cases start to spike up again. It is the big wild card. Um, and I guess just going back to something you were talking about earlier, I mean, who knows ultimately what's going to happen to home prices, but we can we can make some guesses around that. Um, is, is it whether or not the employment picture improves and people feel good about their job prospects? I mean, what do you think ultimately are the key drivers behind what happens to home prices? And if it's a story of there will be some depreciation, just how much depreciation we would see? Right. Well, uh, it's a great question. Let's bear in mind here that this all occurred starting in March, and we're only three months later. Mm. Typically, yeah. what happens is uh, if uh, what will drive down housing prices more than anything else will be if people are unemployed for a long time, and that's just an economic reality. If you don't have a job, if money isn't coming in, uh, then you're going to have to start thinking about alternative arrangements for housing. So um, if... Uh, the unemployment rate goes from, say, 13% currently down to single digits by the end of the year, which would be a little optimistic, but certainly possible. Uh, it, it may be that housing prices don't go down that much. Uh, maybe 5%, maybe 10%. There's a lot of people who think that could be a good outcome, including myself. You never want to see housing prices go down, but uh, like any other financial in instrument or any uh, real, uh, real financial asset, they go up and down in value over the course of an economic cycle. I'm, um, I continue to be, uh, I continue to be optimistic about Canada in that there's a real shortage of housing, there's a real shortage of supply. Uh, I think Canadians generally are conservative uh, in nature, and they're going to be careful and they're going to be worried about their jobs. Uh, Remember, in the United States, unemployment in the last Great Recession only hit 10 percent. We are talking about 13 percent on both sides of the border right now. And the housing market went down 30 percent in the United States and came, took seven years to come back totally in terms of pricing uh, and unemployment. So, uh, but I'm encouraged also by the fact that Canada doesn't have a big sub subprime mortgage market and it's unlikely you're going to see much fraud in the, uh, in the mortgage market in Canada. And that means that there was good underwriting practices and standards. Uh, we'll see. But I, uh, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, but I am uh, somewhat optimistic.